Hello and welcome to this tutorial in Imagineer Systems Mocha. My name is Ben Hushner from Curious Turtle and in this short tutorial we're going to see how we can use Mocha AE to get both tracking data and shape data directly into After Effects to help us out on this little paint job. So if we take a look through the shot here we can see a number of different things. Now this would normally be quite a challenging shot to track. We've got um, a lot of motion blur, we've got a, a camera that's bouncing around all over the place. But more importantly, I think we've got this fella here who's ruining our shot. So we're going to paint him out. So we come into Photoshop. You can see I've just quickly painted out the, uh, the background there, just painted him out. Yes, there's quite an ugly visible seam here. The shot's going to move too quickly. We're hardly going to see, hardly see that at all. I've just had to extend the edges of the canvas out just a little bit. So that's fine. We'll come back to, uh, come back to our clean plate later. So back in Mocker AE, what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, create our track. So this track is, is quite tricky because, uh, as I said, the, um, you know, the camera's all over the place. It's using quite a wide angle. Um, so you've got a lot, of, a lot of distortion going on here, a lot of, uh, a lot of shear as well. And we're going to have to do two tracks to get this working. We're going to have to do a track for the front and one for the back because, of course, the amount of movement between the, the foreground and the background is going to be substantially different. So let's, uh, let's start with our first track. I'm going to track this one backwards because this is where we have the best view of, of the Jeep to begin with. So we're going to just start with that. I'm going to name this one front track. Always a good habit to get into to name your layers. Just have that selected. Have a look at the motion here. We are going to want translations, rotation and shear on this one as well because the wide angle lens does create quite a huge amount of distortion. Uh, and while we're at it, what I'm going to do is, is also create another track for the background. I'm going to be using Imagineer Systems Planar Tracker. So instead of just tracking one or two points, I'm going to be tracking shape planes. So this will give us a far more accurate track than just a regular point tracker. So I've got my back track and my front track here. Uh, I've got them going to track here. And so let's just track backwards. We can set two or more tracks up at the, uh, at the same time. We don't have to track things individually. I'm just going to expand out this a little bit here just so we get a bit more data. There we go. Oftentimes you won't have to uh, create any keyframes within your shape at all. As we can see as the shot continues forward, you know, it's pretty much holding the um, holding the shape of that layer anyway. So another great thing about using the planar tracker is if our subject goes partially out of screen, you know, we've got the rest of the shape that's going to um, going to continue to give data to the to the tracker. So we're still going to be able to track our object uh, without any sort of weird and wonderful workarounds. The nice thing is we can change the shape of this. As long as it remains on the same plane, our track is still going to hold true. As we come to the end, let's just see how it handles this uh, crash thing. That's staying very clear. Right. Excellent. So let's take a quick look through that. But let's turn on uh, the surface and the grid so we can actually make this this track as accurate as possible. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is actually come to a come to a nice clear frame where I can see the back of the Jeep. There we go. Nice, nice and relatively sharp. Um, I'm just going to hide the back track to begin with, in fact, lock it just so I don't accidentally change it. We'll just work on this front track to begin with. If I turn on the surface, we get our surface shape here. So this this can be used as the basis for 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 corner point tracking. But in this case, we're just going to use it to check the accuracy and, uh, and adjust the accuracy of this track. We'll just uh, zoom in slightly so we can make sure that we're all looking good. I can even turn on a grid as well so that all my perspective lines are, are pretty much accurate. But um, for the moment being, I'm just going to use the, just use the surface here and come down into my adjust track here. And let's start to just have a little look. So we can use the adjust track to, to check that the data that we're getting from our tracker is as, as accurate as possible. We never sort of keyframe the surface uh, itself, but what we're doing is we're using the adjust track uh, as a sort of addition to the, to the planar track that we've already done. It's sort of like parenting to a null object in After Effects. So you can affect the movement of a layer without affecting the layer itself. We try to write as few keyframes as possible. And we'll just come here. We can also use this down here. This isn't going to be a, uh, we'll just very, very quickly do this. Because this shot has got so much motion blur on, do you know, that's, that's held it amazingly well, amazingly well. And just compare our current frame to our master frame. So made a little bit trickier by the fact that we have got 
all of this very, very, uh, this huge amount of motion blur that's going throughout this shot. We can just nudge it up a bit as well, just get it frame accurate. So you can see this track has managed to deal not just with the uh, the regular sort of position and rotation transforms, but also it's handled that um, that shear amazingly well. Okay, so I'm happy with that for the moment. So I'm just going to lock that one and come back to our our uh, backtrack. So now we've got our tracking data sorted out. What we want to do is create a couple of master shapes. I'm going to create master shape for the front area here cut out him from his hand from the from the jeep here and probably his short and i'm going to create a second mask shape that's going to uh, take out take out the rest of it um take out him here and also this this little guy in the back and so let's lock our backtrack up and let's uh, hide that for a second and we're just going to come in We've got two different types of spline we can choose we can choose the x spline which we use for the initial track but we can also use just uh, regular Bezier splines as well. So I should probably be a bit more accurate than I'm going to be here with this one. I'm going to use um, the shadow area here as a nice sort of way of hiding and fudging, fudging this. It's quite a short shot and it moves about so much that uh, in this case I don't actually have to be 100% accurate with my, uh, with my masking. Actually I'll probably take take a bit more of this and swing this over but just just to find a nice the least conspicuous place we can do to to form the patches okay and we'll call this layer front mat there we go so now the nice thing about this is that i've already got my track and my tracking data so instead of having to redo all of that stuff i can just link my um front mat to my front track and link that to the adjusted track and let's have a look at how that goes you see that's transforming the shape in pretty much the exact way that we want it to uh, the only thing i think at the moment that we're really going to have to look out for is where the wide angle lens is just going to to create this this weird thing especially with this tire here so i'm just going to come in and, and just adjust these tracks here adjust this mask so you can just see how useful this would be for for doing uh, rotoscoping jobs again the fewer the keyframes you have to do uh, the better so three keyframes and link them to our original tracking data that's fantastic that's fantastic it's unbelievable let's just soften out all these so select those add that there we can see we've only now just created a um let's have a turn my mat on actually and zoom in a little bit so I've created a nice sort of soft edge. Just take that away. See a nice sort of soft edge there, going to a, a harder edge um, over there. So we've got full control over our our um, edge softness. So I can come in. I can even sort of soften the edges up here um, on individual points as well, or if I needed a bit more, you know, a bit more softness on on certain areas, I can always just come and uh, come and change that there. So we've got full full control over that. So that's my front mat done. Uh, again, let's let's turn tracking off. So I don't act accidentally uh, and lock it and turn it off there, so I don't accidentally do anything with it. And let's come to our back mask. Here we go. Uh, so again, actually this one here, I can I think I'm probably get away with a with an X spline, so I can be a bit a uh, bit more cavalier with this one. Let's take that around, around about there. I want to make sure there's a tiny bit of overlap going on. Um, so I don't want any strange holes going on in my mask there. And the nice thing we're using, using X splines, I can always come in and make these sharper corners just by pulling the edge along there. So soft, soft corner or a harder corner. Uh, what I'm, let's give this a good name. We'll call this back mat. And again, we're going to link this to our back track. And let's just see how it just see how it works. There we go. And that's working. That's working very nicely. 
Now, the only thing is, because of the change in perspective, we're getting a lot more of this um, Jeep 